Marie, hey, congratulations for your short film that uh, recently uh, was screened at uh, ScreenFest. Thank you so much. It was exciting. Uh, ScreenFest was a blast. I'll be honest, man. That, uh, yeah, it was. It was so much more than I ever thought that it would be. I hadn't been yet, and uh, it was incredible. Wow, that is terrific to hear. Well, let, let's talk about this short film that you actually uh, conjured up here. Uh, how how do you pronounce the? Uh, is it Simon? Yes, yes, Simon. Um, it's a uh, th there's there's a hidden meaning there for some people that have found it. Oh, really? Yeah. Ah, uh, this is my dog Dudley, by the way, who has to uh, has to say hi. Hello, bud. Hi. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah, I've been, I've been I kind of keep it under wraps a little bit to see if people notice, uh, but I can tell you that it's actually just mimic backward. Uh huh. I, so, I was I, I was I was going to say I was going to take a wild guess just by reading the synopsis if it, if the story was about uh, you know doppelgangers, but but sort I, of. Know, I I know exactly what a mimic is too. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In, in, in thinking about how I would title this and make it something a little bit different and kind of give way to what it's about, but not actually give way. Uh, I came up with just doing mimic backward, which in turn, because this is the first five pages of a feature is actually the name of the creature, the entity itself that uh, the people in the small town refer to it as. So. Well, I have to say that is a very uh, clever uh, naming of, uh, <laughs> of your film. I mean, it's, it's, it, I won't say this. It is much better naming that backwards than to say doppelganger backwards. That, that, <laughs> that, 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 that would po that would pose some problems. Yeah, that, that was <laughs> that would make it sound more like a, a much more foreign film than it actually is. And uh, yeah, that would be hard. I don't know how doppelganger backward. Wow, that would be interesting though. Ooh. <laughs> per per perhaps a, a film, another film down the road. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, so Cody, tell tell us this: where where the original idea came from for Simon? Um, with it, it's it's actually just one of the things that scares me the most. I'll be completely honest. Hey, Dudley, can you sit there? Um, I have this weird kind of reoccurring dream and fear of standing in front of myself and not really knowing which one of me is the real me, if you were. So, the idea of if it's anything from doppelgangers to mimics to uh, skinwalkers, anything that way, anything that can become you really just freaks me out. So uh, the whole idea of it just came from what scares me. Hopefully I can put it on screen to at least give someone that kind of creepy, weird feeling and maybe scare them themselves. Uh, so, yeah, it was uh, it was basically probably just a bunch of recurring dreams that 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 haunted me even during the day. Wow. You you must have uh, some uh, some dreams. Maybe you sh should stop eating food before you go to sleep. Or something. <laughs> something something triggers it, man. I I don't know exactly what it was. When I was younger, I used to listen to a uh, a certain ending to a song on like bus rides from uh, uh, sporting events, uh, and I would continuously have the exact same not the dream that this is based on, but I could force myself to have this reoccurring dream and get a little bit further into it, a little bit further into it. Um, and unfortunately, they've, they've always been scary ones. They're not cool ones. So, <laughs> so how did you initially want to approach uh, this 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 story? You you always had it uh, sort of like in the back of your mind that it's going to be like a camp campfire situation. Yeah. So um, I, I have the idea. I'm currently writing the feature itself, and with that, I wanted to kind of start the movie itself, the feature in a cold opening kind of way, something that could work on its own, but also gives you enough to show you what the world is that you're in and what the um, uh, the rules are basically. So Simum itself is the first five pages of the feature, which serves as our cold opening, if you will, uh, of the feature itself. It's it's me killing Drew, Mar Drew Barrymore at the start of screen, you know? And I, I, I wanna show the audience that this is, this is the bane of what we're in and then take them completely out of it to show them our, our main characters in the storyline that way so that when it starts coming back in uh, midway through the feature itself, that their kind of understanding of what it would be. So how, how much of this uh, feature have you already written out or you're in the process or it's already completed? Uh, I'm definitely in the process. I mean, I have, I have the lookbook down. I have my synopsis and everything I've written. I've written multiple drafts that I've been scrapped. I have this really uh, I have this issue with writing where I don't like to go back and edit my writing completely. I like to rewrite it side by side. Um, so if there's a percentage wise on where I am, I would say probably about 75% done with the script itself. 
but yeah, I, I, I cannot just, just edit words without having to redo the entire thing because if a small thing changes, you know, three pages beforehand, it could have a ripple effect and that butterfly effect to keep going and then change it further. So uh, it's kind of a tedious, fun, and extremely taxing process uh, to, to write for myself at least. <laughs> so let's, uh, on the production side, I guess it's fairly simple, especially uh, for a short film, you know, very affordable is just to, uh, just to set this up in the middle of the desert. <laughs> yeah. Um, to be fair, my, my director of photography, uh, Eric Payne and myself spent a lot of time working together and rehearsing because originally when we wanted to do this, we wanted to do a full on one shot. We wanted to do a Tarantino-esque, like go around in circles around them on the fire, follow her to the truck and never cut. Um, so we were in our, in my backyard, my wife and I's backyard here, uh, probably 10 to 12 times walking through the script itself as it changed to kind of get our feet underneath us and figure out where it was. And then uh, when it, the script kind of changed and became this fashion where we weren't going to do a single one shot um, and be able to just capture everything that we wanted to, then we brought the actors in and we did a couple rehearsals in our backyard here and then just went out to the middle of the desert and had nothing but beautiful darkness and uh, a wonderful area out at uh, uh, 29 Palms uh, where a friend of mine has a has a, uh, a house and we were able to use his property and go there and shoot and did a 12 hour overnight shoot in the middle of the desert. And it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. I, I've been at 29 Palms once and I could admit uh, there is nothing out there. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. We, when we went out to, to location scout, uh, we got out there at night and me and one of the producers and my DP, uh, uh, Trip Townsend, uh, one of my producers, and we looked and we were just like, this is, absolutely perfect we can look for miles and there is nothing there uh and at the same time it's kind of creepy but also freeing and that's the one thing about the desert that i love because i was born in texas and i lived uh, a lot of my younger youth there and i would go back and visit family and the desert itself always just really creeped me out because it's different than the forest the forest you can hide behind things the desert stuff is hiding in plain sight and that kind of uh is what brought me to want to put something in the desert and want to go out there in the middle of nowhere and and do it that way because the feature itself is actually uh set in uh, uh west texas i know it, it it's funny is because the description of your uh, short film is that they have to hide from whatever this is and i was gonna say there, there there's nothing to hide from <laughs> out, out there true. i mean i mean i mean granted there's more than 29 palms out there but still <laughs> that's true <laughs> So, uh, so in, tell, tell us about the challenges of uh, doing this, uh, you know, short production out there. Um, I mean, the, the desert is one thing. I imagine it was pretty cold. And night shoots, it's also another. Oh, my gosh, yes. Um, we, I think one of the biggest challenges, honestly, is getting a cast and crew out there for a night shoot and taking care of them properly. So what we had is we actually uh, we had a driver who drove the cast and crew down in a large van so that they'd be safe, got them there. And then our driver went and went to sleep so that they would have the wherewithal to be able to drive again in the morning and get our cast and crew back home. Because, you know, according to all the rules and everything, we definitely don't want people trying to drive four hours back after a full on night shoot. Um, so other than getting over that, it is it's cold. It's dark. We had. We had six different very large lights that were set up that our editor finally and beautifully edited out so that you can't see it to give the fake moonlight so that at least we could see everyone and and kind of make sure that we could uh, view everything that I needed people to see, but also maybe stuff that we didn't want them to see uh, because I did hide a few. Uh, there are some hidden gems in the background if you watch it. Uh, but the great thing was even with the lights and stuff, because it's 29 Palms, and because there's not much there and it was a clear night in the middle of April, that's just the start of April, um, we had moonlight and it worked absolutely beautifully. And it turned out that I'm behind the monitor, able to see everything and, and just experience it through the monitor while it's right in front of me in pitch black. It was awesome. Uh, and I would say that a lot of the challenges ended up being stuff that really helped us out. You know, mm -hmm. like uh, if, if anything seemed a little bit dark or was harder to kind of uh, get around because of where we were it ended up uh, a plus because of the desert itself is so unpredictable and so interesting that it helped uh so that was that was fantastic and uh, our sound designer trevor gates he 
took the sounds of the desert and was able to create this entity, this this weird, disgustingly, disturbingly bad sound that I don't know where it came from. And he, he came up with it and I was just blown away. But that to me is what the desert is. It's something that's unpredictable and interesting and strange. Wow. Now, uh, now talk to us about uh, the cast. I mean, it, it seems like, you know, you use like uh, a small, intimate cast. And I guess, I'm guessing they're not, they're not lasting very long, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, no, they don't. <laughs> but um, the cast itself, uh, they're fantastic. I mean, uh, a few of these people are, uh, a few of the cast, as far as like Laura Jenkins, Dan Cole, and uh, Heather Ludwig, I actually went to college with in Missouri. Um, and they had all moved out here to pursue acting and in talks with them and filling roles and stuff like that, it was it was really nice to be able to have them come on, read with me and and secure that. Uh, whereas like Mike Duff is a friend of mine that I met uh, through another friend and he's been out here for a while and in New York um, and having him come on again, just another friend. It was beautiful. They all kind of knew each other. Uh, but Darian, uh, Darian Michael Gary is, I saw him do a short uh, it, it called Worm Food at a, another festival. And my director of photography, Eric, shot that short as well. And I went, who is he? Like, who is that guy? Because he just had this beautiful look on his face and he, he conveyed emotion so well. So uh, I contacted him. We had lunch and kind of just told him about what this would be and got him interested as well. Um, but with the five cast member, members, the way that I kind of pitch it to them is that I wanted this to be more of a dance rather than just a shot by shot. Let's get coverage from over the shoulder and over here and a two shot there, anything that way. I wanted them to know that what I'm trying to do and what uh, what my goal is, is to visually take the audience on a ride while they're having their lives kind of on focus. And the dance itself comes with us coming from the fire, going to the truck, coming back, and then basically all hell breaking loose. And having two different parts of a short where at one point it's just shot regular and the second part is shot almost like a, a handheld action film, but slow enough that it works with uh, horror and thriller and kind of keeping you on edge. I like it how you d describe describe a campfire slaughter as a dance, <laughs> as, as if this is like a beautiful choreography for her. <laughs> I think I get that from my wife. Uh, my wife, Joanne Higginbottom, she did the, she did the score. Um, and she's, she's insanely talented and she's insanely, she's done very well. Uh, she's, she's had a lot of accolades and, and uh, she does the music with Tyler Bates on a lot of stuff and she's fantastic. But I, I think I can cheat a little bit because she will write music for me while I'm writing. So I'll tell her like what my story is. And she will give me a suite of how she thinks the score would sound or what I can write with. So the whole thing of it being a dance is also because I'm sitting there writing to music that was written for me. Uh, and it's just incredible. I, I think it's I think it's one of the, the biggest uh, and most amazing things that I can have in my pocket is just literally have one of the most talented people in the world able to just write music for me when she wants. Wow. You 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 are you have all this. uh all these connections in the business around you, you must, you must feel fortunate. I do honestly. And that's, that's the big reason why we've gotten such a wonderful uh, response to Simum and it's gotten into some amazing festivals and other stuff's coming down the line. I mean, I'm here talking to you and it's, it's really a testament to the talent that I was able to be a part of. And they'll say they were a part of my project, but really it was me being a part of this amazing group of people from pre-production to post-production and everything in between that really helped this come to life. And I really, I really, really do appreciate it. And because of this team, I'm able to have a, a short that's doing well and hopefully can bleed into a hour and 40 minute, you know, feature down the line. <laughs> and I, and, and just to remind everybody, this is your directorial debut. How was that overall experience? Uh, amazing. Um, I've, I've very rarely been behind the camera. Uh, I, I came out here to originally act and I did short films and uh, a few commercials and uh, I did a little bit of stunt work as well. And being behind the camera though and being able to see how it's made and kind of understand that way uh, as a director itself was just absolutely mind-blowingly fun. And working with actors, I, I, I originally wanted to be an actor myself. So working with actors came really, really natural that I, I understand that process, that I can really 
hopefully have that conversation and, and be able to explore with them on a different level than some other directors might be able to. Um, and in that same sense, I have a wonderful team, uh, you know, behind my DP as well. You know, Blake Buchanan came on and did uh, the second uh, uh, second camera and everything. And he was great. And trusting these guys to do their job so well, I didn't have much work, I'll be honest. Um, and it did help. It, uh, it did help that we had so much preparation. Um, and I think that's the biggest thing that I take away from this is that as much preparation as we can possibly get will just help the whole thing run smoother and help make uh, my job and the creation process itself a lot, a lot easier. That's wonder wonderful to hear. So, so we we could we could wait to see that uh, full full length feature uh, from yourself. I I I personally would like to talk about the details, but you know, it's one of those things where we we probably would be better to be surprised, especially if your script could still change thirty five times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it still it still could tweak a little bit. Yeah. Um, and I, I've been, I've been a little mum on that. I, I don't want to, I don't want to give too much away. Um, but luckily the, uh, uh, the response to the short itself has yielded a lot of people asking for more. And I hope that kind of wave continues that maybe we can get into talks with others and, and start looking into, uh, what it entails for a feature and hopefully people want to see more and enjoy it. Most excellent. And one more thing before, before I leave, uh, any more chances that people could have it, you know, to get their eyeballs on your uh, short film? Yeah, uh, coming up, uh, not this weekend, but next weekend, uh, I, I believe Saturday the 29th, I think. Yeah, the, the 29th, it's playing in Fantastic Fest in San Diego. And then on the 30th, we are uh, premiering at the very last spot with another with a feature um, at Horror House in Santa Clarita. And then um, as we go on a little bit more, we've gotten into a few more festivals that we have announced. Um, New York uh, Horror Festival in November uh, and then in December. I believe it's in November. It might be December. There's my weeks and months and everything are just going everywhere at the moment. Um, and we're in Vegas at one point. At the start of November, we're playing in Austin as well. So there are a lot of opportunities. And the great thing is a few of these uh, festivals also give online screenings too so it doesn't have to just be in person i know that new york does that and i know that shock fest um as well does that so there are definitely opportunities out there and i'll be posting on social media as much as my wife makes me because i'm not a big social media guy but she's very much adamant that i need to be doing it so i'll be posting hopefully uh for others to catch it only, only if you had a doppelganger to do that for you <laughs> oh man see i like that idea i'm scared of the doppelganger and maybe i could just keep him away but if he can just do my social media Oh man, I might I might have to look into that. <laughs> there we go, Cody. It's been a pleasure uh, carrying this conversation now with you about uh, Simon, and um, everyone will have a chance to uh, watch it as it's going to be in the festival circuit for a while. Yeah, I appreciate it so much. This was amazing. Uh, I, I love chatting about it, and thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to to talk with me. Hey, not a problem. Hope, hopefully, uh, once your uh, feature film, you know, it's all done, we get to do this again in detail. Hey, I look forward to that day. That will be a lot of fun. Appreciate it. Well, thank you. Next time. Thank you very much.